This is a Glasgow switch fuse, a classic of British electrical engineering. And I'm sure anyone who's worked in the electrical industry for some time knows the power you have when you use one of these to disconnect a whole building or an enormous piece of plant. I mean, look at it. It is absolutely rock solid. I've seen instances where people strip these out and dint the skip when they put them in there. Not that you'd be doing that these days because the price of metal you don't want to be throwing that away. Instead, we have things like eBay, where there's a healthy market in people selling these on, which is where I got this one from. But I also got this smaller version here, and we're going to cut to the bench and show you how we convert these into the world's biggest wireless switches. But before we do that, let's just take a further trip down memory lane to remember these old phase colours that we left behind so long ago. Let's take a look inside this engineering classic. Just undoing the screws isn't enough. You need to switch it off to undo the mechanical interlock. And even then, you still have to dismember it further, taking out the fuse so we can get to the switch contacts, which again are under a shielded shroud. So this is even touch proof, even though it's got an interlock. I wonder why that is. Um, so big terminals here. So I'm not going to be able to get thin wires into there. So I need to bring out some quite thick wires, even though this is not going to be used as a switch. It's just a signaling device for a little module that we'll see soon. So using the wire goes to convert from this big chunky wire down to a small wire that you'll see in a little while. So just uh, tighten the terminals up and just bring those shrouds back in. And then just tighten one last one down. Keep those wires out of the way. They can get uh, caught up in the mechanism if you're not uh, careful uh, with those. And then again, just bring the fuses back in. So this is just for, just for effect because we still need the mechanism. Uh, and we're only using one pole of this. So here's the secret here. This is the Philips Hue wall switch module. It's designed to keep smart lights working uh, in the event of a switch being switched off. So essentially you take the switch out of circuit um, to keep power to smart lights, but it also enables you to convert any switch to a wireless remote like the switch. And that's what we're doing here. It's dead easy. There's two inputs into this wall switch module, just plug into uh, with the little wiring loom that comes into it. And then that's why we needed the, uh, the converter from the big wires to the small wires because they are quite thin, but again, they're not actually switching anything. They're just sensing whether the switch is open or closed. So just put them into the Wago connectors. And then in this case, I'm just tucking this module out of the way. It is battery powered and the battery life is up to five years. So I think I've just hid that in the bottom there so it doesn't get in the way of the switching mechanism. So cover back on, screws in place, and that should be it. We're converted to a wireless switch. I hope you'll agree that was a pretty simple process. And just to prove it works, lights off. Lights are on, and all of the lights on the set are in fact controlled now from this switch, which is just to prove I am not a magician. There is, uh, there are no wires, or perhaps I am a magician. Um, but why would you want to do this? Obviously, you know, everyone likes that industrial aesthetic now. It's very popular in certain types of installation, almost illegal in some parts of London to open a cafe with a plaster on the walls. So everyone likes exposed conduit, so you could add a bit of, bit of drama to an installation like that. Or perhaps at home, if you've all got a room that you like to retreat to and you like the feeling of power of switching the lights on or off when you go into that special place. Uh, some US visitors uh, did uh, contact us about this. Obviously, this is a classic of British engineering, but I believe you've got some too. If you look on eBay, there is Cutler Hammer. Um, they make a similar robust version for the American market. Ironically, now, both companies, both owned by Eaton. So we're friends across the pond. A um, little bit more trivia inside this switch. You notice what you don't see on many isolators these days, it actually tells you the power loss in the lid there. So nine and a half watts uh, lost across this when it's uh, working at its 100 amp current. Never see that ever again. So what I've actually done on the bench here is correct the second largest wireless switch in the world. The other one is behind me. We'll check it still works because I think we should have two-way switching. There we go, lights off lights on and that demonstrates the flexibility of the system as part of the Philips Hue lighting system you can also use the other controls they have in there such as this remote control so again I can switch the lights on and off with that and select scenes in terms of this switch you can also determine what this switch does in terms of exactly which lights it switched off or even scene selection if you want to do that but it's that flexibility you can have almost any type of switch and that's what we've looked at in this video.